Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Christina and I'm the Education Coordinator here at the DuPage County Farm Bureau. And if you've been following along with us, you've probably watched our apple and pumpkin lessons. Well, this time we're gonna be talking about corn. And corn is a really important crop that we grow here in our state of Illinois. So let's take a moment and I want you to think about what you know about corn. And this could be anything. Um, anything at all. Just brainstorm a few ideas and let me know what do you know about corn? Okay, well you might have said some things like, well, we eat corn um, or corn is a vegetable or we use corn for cooking. Maybe you cook with corn starch or corn flour. Um, we grow it in the United States, um, especially here in the Midwest. Um, and all those things are very true. And I'm sure the other um, knowledge that you had about corn uh, was great. So some other things that we know about corn Corn is actually native to Mexico, um, and you may hear it called maize. So that's another word for corn. Um, and it was grown here in North America by the Native Americans long before the pilgrims and settlers came here. And corn is thought to be over 10,000 years old. Now that's really old, but it didn't always look the way that it looks today. So corn over time, um, the farmers would save the best kernels um, from the ears and save them and plant them for the next year. So this is called selective breeding. And so you can see in this picture here that the cobs of corn, they used to be a lot smaller. They didn't have as many, um, as many kernels on them, but over time, because the farmer saved the best kernels um, and planted them each year, the corn um, grew differently, and now we've got much larger ears of corn with a lot more kernels, um, and they would save them based on things like taste and texture too. So that's a little bit of background about corn. So let's talk about the different types of corn. Um, this corn is probably one that you're really familiar with, and that is sweet corn. And this is the corn that we eat. Also, we call it corn on the cob. Um, so this corn is considered a vegetable and it's actually Illinois state vegetable. So that's pretty fun. So each one of these little um, yellow pieces on the ear here, you can see those are each called a kernel. Now, sweet corn is harvested when it's still immature. So those kernels are still full of sugar, um, which makes them nice and sweet and soft for us to eat. Um, and it can be canned or frozen. And this is a type of corn that we would grow in our gardens or buy at the store or the farmer's markets. So that's the first type of corn. This next type of corn you probably know about too, and that is popcorn. Um, so popcorn grows just like um, sweet corn. It still grows on a stalk and an ear, um, but usually when we see it, we just see the kernels. So you can see in this picture up in the top left corner here, um, that's what popcorn looks like on the cob. It actually grows on the cob, just like other types of corn. Um, and popcorn is also Illinois state snack. Um, now popcorn kernels are a little bit different. Um, they actually are full of starch and um, that starch is surrounding a little bead of moisture. Um, so moisture is water. So once those kernels are heated up, so if we take those kernels and put them in our popcorn popper or the microwave and it's heating them up, that moisture is going to start to expand. Um, and as it expands, it puts pressure on the starch and actually pops it inside out. So that's how popcorn pops and that starch comes on the outside. Um, and then we have our snack. Um, so that's pretty fun. So that is popcorn. Next we have flint corn. Um, now this type of corn is mostly used for decoration um, and it comes in all different types of colors. You can see in the picture here, it's really pretty. Um, so we use it for mostly for decoration in the fall. Um, it has really hard kernels. Um, so it can be ground up into flour and used for cooking also. And now we're going to go to the main type of corn we're going to cover. 
and that is dent corn. Now, dent corn is really important to us here in Illinois and in our country. Um, so a lot of times you'll hear dent corn referred to as field corn. So if you hear someone use the terms field corn or dent corn, just know that they're talking about the same type of corn. So you can see here in this picture here of this ear, each one of the kernels has a little dent on the top of it. That's where it gets its name from. So most of the corn that we grow here in the United States is dent corn. So if you're driving down the road and you see rows and rows of corn, um, most likely it is um, dent corn. About 94% of the corn that we grow is dent corn. Um, and this dent corn, the kernels are really hard and they are full of starch. Um, and we use them for some specific things. Um, the major uses are for animal feed. Um, so they will grind this um, corn down into feed for our livestock like cows and pigs and chickens. We also use it for ethanol, and ethanol um, is an alcohol that's mixed with gasoline, and that reduces our greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so we're trying to reduce um, the pollution by using ethanol. Um, and then we have industrial uses, like household products, and exports. Um, and exports means that those uh, products are being sold to other countries. So um, we're going to sell some of our corn um, to other countries, maybe like Canada or Mexico or Japan. So I have a little game here. I want you guys to take a look at these common household items. Um, and I want you to decide which of these contain corn. Um, take a look. Um, we know that corn can be broken down into things like starch or sweeteners um, or oil. So I want you to take a look and just see if you can figure out which of these have corn in them. All right, so this was a little bit tricky. I actually only have one item on here that does not contain um, corn, and that is glass. Glass is the only item on here that does not contain corn. Everything else on here has some form of corn, maybe corn oil um, that we use in like mayonnaise or salad dressings um, or sweeteners and things like chewing gum and soda um, or corn starch. Um, that's used in like food coloring um, and aspirin and things like that. So most of these items contain corn. Um, so you might have a lot of different things around your house that have corn parts in them. So maybe after this, you can take a look around your kitchen or uh, your closets and see if any of the items you have in your house actually contain corn. So let's move on to our ethanol. So we talked about how um, a big use of dent corn is ethanol. So ethanol is a simple alcohol um, and we add that to gasoline and the purpose of that is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Um, about 98% of the fuel that we drive today, um, that we put in our cars today, contains ethanol. So if you pull up to the gas pump with your parents and you see that E um, on the gas button, that means that it contains ethanol. So ethanol is made by taking those dent corn kernels and grinding them up into a powder. Um, and then it's mixed with water and heated up. Um, and then some enzymes break down, um, break down those kernels and that mash into fermentable sugars. Um, so when we add yeast, um, it ferments the sugars and makes a, um, an alcohol, um, and then it's distilled. So it's really good um, to add this into our fuel to reduce uh, air pollution. So I have a little video for you, just so you can see an example. Um, so one of these, um, it, one of these lamps is burning pure ethanol and the other is going to burn gasoline. So you can see um, which one burns the cleanest. 
You often hear that ethanol is a cleaner burning fuel than gasoline, but what does that really look like? Well, on the left, we have a fuel lamp filled with pure ethanol, and on the right, we have an identical lamp filled with regular unleaded gasoline. As you can see, the ethanol lamp produces no particulate emissions, while the gasoline lamp puts off a thick black smoke. Now let's try to collect some of that smoke. We'll add in a metal funnel around each lamp and place a white cotton square over the top. Let's light them up and see what happens after 30 minutes. At just five minutes, you can already see soot building up on the edge of the gasoline cloth. Halfway through, we can actually see the gasoline cloth getting darker, while the ethanol cloth remains completely clean, except for a few specks that blew over from the gasoline lamp. Keep in mind, the ethanol lamp is still fully burning. That's 30 minutes, let's see the results. Despite looking much less intense, the ethanol's cloth and funnel feels about the same temperature as the gasoline's. The ethanol cloth is just as clean and white as it was 30 minutes ago. The gasoline cloth, on the other hand, is covered in a thick layer of black soot. The same goes for the metal funnel, where the ethanol kept it clean and shiny, while the gasoline covered it in a dirty black film. The choice is clear. All right, so you can see that ethanol really does help um, with our air pollution. You so we also refer to corn as a renewable resource. Um, so I want you to take just a moment and answer these two questions for me. What is a renewable resource? And what are some other renewable resources that you can think of? Okay, well, a renewable resource is um, a natural resource that can be replenished in a finite amount of time, so in a certain amount of time uh, for us to be able to use it. You might have heard in school about non-renewable resources versus renewable resources, so things like, um, like oil and coal um, and things like that are non-renewable because we can't, um, there's a finite amount of them um, and they will run out eventually. Um, and they won't be able to be replenished before we need more of them. And then we have our renewable resources, which we can continue to grow and plant um, and use every year. So some other renewable resources are things like trees, um, other crops, maybe like soybeans, um, water, air, and animals. So all of these things can be renewed uh, year after year by either us intervening and planting more of them or some other natural resources like air and water um, that the earth naturally um, continues to produce um, and clean for us. So let's talk about corn's life cycle um, and how we actually get corn. Um, so we start off with planting corn in the spring. Um, usually in the, the early to late spring, um, farmers will use equipment like a tractor and a planter um, and they'll put corn kernels, corn seed, into those bins here. You can see those little yellow bins. Um, and they will drive through the field and that machine actually digs rows and plants the corn in nice straight rows. Um, so this is happening in the springtime. Um, and then the corn starts to germinate. So it's going to start sprouting um, a few days after it's planted. Um, It'll start to put out some roots um, and then the stalks, um, and it's gonna start growing. Um, so the things it needs to start growing, it needs some soil um, that's full of nutrients, it needs water, and it needs heat. 
from the sun. Um, so the corn will start growing and it takes about 120 days for corn to mature. So let's take a look at what the corn plant actually looks like. So we'll start at the top. Um, so you can see the top, there are tassels. And this is where the pollen is stored. Um, and we've talked a lot about pollination with our apples and pumpkin topics. Well, corn needs to be pollinated as well in order to produce the kernels, which is the part of the corn that we want. Now corn, unlike those other fruits and vegetables, um, it doesn't rely on insects to pollinate it. Um, a lot of corn is self-pollinating. The pollen will naturally fall, maybe by wind or water, or could have insects, um, moving it down to the silks. So you can see here, the silks are on the top part of the ear. Those silks are those stringy parts. Um, so maybe if you, bought, you bit into an ear of sweet corn and you had that long string that maybe got stuck in your teeth, that's a silk. Um, so in order for the corn cob to grow kernels, those silks have to be pollinated. So the pollen will fall down and on a silk and each one of those silks that's pollinated will actually grow a kernel of corn. Now those ears of corn are wrapped in what we call a husk and a husk is kind of like a leaf. Um, it's the protective part um, that's protecting the, the ear of corn. So then we've got our leaves um, and then the ears are, like I said, on the inside. Um, we have our stalk that's supporting the whole plant and then we go down to the roots, which are under the ground, um, and they are supporting the plant um, and bringing up nutrients and water um, to help the plant grow. So for 120 days, these plants are growing, and they can get anywhere from 5 feet to 12 feet tall. So they get really, really tall. Um, so for field corn, um, they have to be completely um, dried out before it's time for harvest. So you can see here, the corn will start out like a deep green color. And then in this picture on the left, you can see this picture was taken in August. So the corn is starting to dry out. It's turned a more light green color. Um, and then finally, when we get into the fall, the corn is going to be dried out. The plants are going to be dead. Um, and the, the kernels of corn um, are gonna be full of starch. So then they're ready for harvest. So farmers are going to test to see the moisture in their corn. We don't wanna harvest the corn too early if it's got too much moisture in it, um, because if we go to store it, it could rot or go bad or get moldy, and we do not want that. So the corn has to be nice and dried out um, before it's harvested. Now once it's ready for harvest, farmers are gonna use these special machines called combines. Um, and these combines are gonna drive through the field. And they're called combines because they're combining a bunch of different actions. So they're picking the corn, they're separating the kernels from the rest of it. And then the pieces that we don't want, we don't want the leaves, we don't want the stalks, we don't want the roots. All of that stuff is going to get blown out the back of the combine and put back into the field. The only piece that we want to keep are the actual kernels. So you can see in this photo here, um, this combine is going through the field and it's actually dumping those kernels that are stored in this bin up here into a wagon. Um, so this wagon is going to take the, um, the kernels of corn and take it into storage before it's going to be used. So <clears throat> corn can be stored in things like bins um, or harvest stores, or it can be taken to a grain elevator and um, so it's stored inside these bins where it's continued to dry out. So these bins have special fans um, which move air inside to make sure that the corn um, stays dry or finishes drying out. And then from this storage point, it's sold off um, and used for all the different things that we talked about, our animal feed, our ethanol, exporting to different countries, um, a lot of our industrial uses. So it's manufactured and made to all kinds of things um, that we use on a daily basis. So that is the life cycle of corn um, and kind of what we use it for. So I want to thank you guys for joining me. Um, I hope you learned something new about corn um, and be sure to check out our upcoming video um, of a corn field um, harvest time. We'll have that coming up soon um, towards the end of the month. Um, so be sure to tune in for that and thank you and we will see you next time. Bye!